We have an exclusive interview with Republican presidential hopeful, the former Minnesota governor, Tim Pawlenty. Governor Pawlenty, welcome back to the show. You have been a very hard critic of raising the debt ceiling out on the campaign trail. You heard the numbers. You heard Doug holtz and former budget director, former CBO director. What's your take? How can we not acknowledge the need for a debt ceiling increase? Well, Larry, many months ago, I think in January or February, I wrote an op-ed for the Washington Post that said, look, the deadline is not as urgent as they first said. Originally, it was April, then it was May, then it was June or July, now it's August. And I highlighted the fact that for a while, you could use these internal uh, gimmicks or movements of money or cash flow management devices to buy time so you could have the real debate and fix the real problem. But now it looks like that time is running out. And by the way, Geithner, uh, Secretary Geithner told me on Sunday that they blew through the debt ceiling limit in May. Uh, they've already are over the 14.3, and they're using these internal devices to go through it. So, so are, have you they, changed your view? Do, have no. you changed your view now? Are you going to say that we should raise the debt ceiling in view of what you just said, which is right? The numbers from this bipartisan policy center agree. The Geithner numbers for August 2nd seem to be the drop dead date. Is it time now for you, among others, to lead the GOP and say, okay, let's do this? Uh, I've said all along, don't do it unless you get something really good for it. And I've been in favor of structural, real reforms that will fix the problem in the intermediate and long term. So I've been arguing don't do it. But if you do have to do it, when you have to do it, get something good for there it. There are no structural reforms. They're talking about a one and a half trillion dollar deal. I spoke to Senator uh, Mitch McConnell earlier today. They don't even have enforcement for that one and a half trillion dollar deal. There are no spending caps as a share of GDP. There's no balanced budget amendment vote in there. It may be, maybe 1.5 trillion. Katie barred the door. Who knows where that money's going to go? It'll probably all be in the out years, Governor. Well, what do you I sure hope. That? Would, I, would I you, sure. Would, in light of the contingencies that we talked about with the uh, monthly cash flow, would you still back the debt ceiling hike? Larry, that's not a good enough deal, and, and I hope that's not the deal. I hope that's just uh, some subgroup of people talking about what a deal might be, because if you talk to the House Republicans and the people who are going to have to vote on this on the House side, I suspect they have a very different view. I was a governor of the state of Minnesota. We made real change in a very difficult environment, and the way that you do that is you have to draw some lines in the sand. This is a moment that's uncomfortable. It's awkward. It's high drama, but it's also a moment where you can push people's backs against the wall and get something significant. At what and, point does the they better do it. At what point does the Republican Party get blamed for a budget catastrophe, a debt downgrade, a decline in the value of the dollar? We'll never get back our AAA rating. At what point does the GOP want to take Senator McConnell's advice and just get out of this mess? Well, here's what I think they should do. They should send the president a cut, cap, and balance approach, structural reform. If he vetoes it, then send him the installment plan, you know, meter it out to him uh, every couple of months so he has to come back and walk the plank every few months. But I would not simply... Uh, roll over and give them the kind of deal that was described earlier. I don't think that's nearly good enough. Well, essentially, Senator McConnell says we'll give you the rollover every few months. That's his plan. No, you're not going to get I, a Senate vote on cut, cap, and balance. As meritorious as that may be, you're not going to get a Senate vote. Well, the president's going to have to be uh, make his own decisions here, Larry, but you sh they should send him a bill and... and uh, challenge him to veto it or sign it, a bill that has real reform in it. And uh, you know, the idea that President Obama gets to skate on this without having to make a decision, and I'd send it to him relatively soon. Maybe, maybe it becomes, you know, he doesn't get to skate. He gets the albatross of three debt ceiling increases around his neck. Maybe that's the best ploy. Well, and if they do, if they do have to do this in installments, I hope they don't. I would not give him, I would make him come back every month, uh, not just give him some, you know, six-month window that he can work with. So, uh, Governor, you were on the uh, talk shows on Sunday, or one of them, and um, you didn't mention your 5% growth plan. Have you abandoned your 5% growth plan? The economy is worse <laughs> than the last time we talked about. Larry, no, I have not abandoned the 5% growth plan. As you know, we, all this talk about cutting is important, but we should first talk about growth, and we can't just have anemic growth or below average growth. We need exceptional growth, and I've got the most specific, most aggressive, most bold economic growth plan of any candidate in this race, including the President of the United States. But when you talk to Dave Gregory on the on the uh, on the on the Sunday talk show, Meet the Press, you didn't mention five percent, and you didn't list your various components of your plan. So I and others wondered if you were backing off the specifics. No, no, not at all, Larry. Of course, we just couldn't squeeze it into that format. But the specifics are: we set a goal of five percent growth, and we put the details underneath it, cutting the corporate rate from thirty-five to fifteen, shrinking the individual brackets from six to two, eliminating taxation on dividends, estate, capital gains. 
uh, and interest, and then doing the real work of not just increasing, uh, not just cutting taxes, but also cutting spending. And uh, this plan over 10 years would ignite this economy, get this economy moving again. It's the exact type of thing that business leaders and entrepreneurs and job providers all over this country tell me, that's what you need to do, Governor, and they're ready to go. Now we need a president who will do it. Seldom have I heard you repeat the specifics, as you just did here on the Cutler Report. So I thank you for that. But if you had been repeating these specifics and your growth plan these last five, six, seven weeks, wouldn't you be higher in the polls? <laughs> I mean, that's a, it's well, an odd point. Why don't you hammer away on a growth plan? You got this lousy 2% jobless recovery going on. What are you so bashful about, Governor Polanyi? Well, I bring it up in every speech, every presentation, and when a host like you actually gives me more than 10 seconds to answer, <laughs> then I do lay it out. But uh, this is one of the few times where I've got more than uh, 10 seconds to address the economy. All right, how are you going to, last 30 seconds, how are you going to pull this thing out? You're way down in the polls. Michelle Bachman is surging. You took a couple of whacks at her. Mitt Romney's the front runner, I guess. How are you going to come back, Governor? Well, we're going to come back by showing great progress in, in that Ames straw poll in August, and we're going to win the Iowa caucuses, and we'll do well in the other early states. But the preseason's now wrapping up. And the kickoff's coming in the start of the real campaign, and you'll see our numbers climb. I'm confident of that.